This is a, a, a real tribute to your hard work, to your dedication, to all the sacrifices you made in, in high school. This is why you worked the way you worked all those years, so you could sit in these seats um, and, hear, and hear what we have to say. I know you have a lot of good choices. Um, I know this is an exciting weekend, and you have other exciting weekends coming up, so uh, make sure that you ask the questions you want to ask. <clears throat> Kick the tires at Villanova. Um, I think we have a lot to offer. Uh, I want to draw your attention to some of the people you probably met already, the student ambassadors in the, the gray quarter zips um, in the back there. Um, they're terrific. They're the people you want to talk to. Our panelists will be here after uh, to answer any questions you have as well. The honors leadership will be here after, and we also have a, an open house tomorrow from 1 to 3 in Gary Hall. So if you have any questions about anything uh, in honors or anything in Villanova, we're more than happy to take them. Um, <clears throat> I was talking to some students uh, in the program, some of our panelists, before uh, we started. And I said, you know, tell me about your feelings when you were uh, sitting in these seats. And they said, we were uh, excited, really excited that we were there uh, and started getting ready to start this adventure, but also really nervous about the choice that we had to make. It was the biggest choice uh, I had to make at that point, one student said. Um, and I felt like the stakes were really high. And so um, I, was, I felt a lot of pressure. Um, maybe you feel this way, maybe you feel this kind of combination of excitement and, and um, a little bit of anxiety maybe. Um, so I want to talk to you this afternoon um, about uh, what you should think about as you make this big choice. Um, and I want to challenge you to think differently about what you need to do in college. One of the things that, our student, that, that the student I was talking to said to me was, I had no idea what I wanted to do. <laughs> and so the, the college uh, decision felt like I was making a decision about my, my whole life. Um, so I want, I want to challenge you to think differently about uh, the choice you're facing. And, and the, if you want to get sort of the distilled message that I want to send, it's have the, the, the courage, the intelligence, the imagination to follow your path. Not somebody else's path, but your path. Um, not the path that other people expect you to walk. Not a path that's easy to take or conventional. Uh, the path that works for you. Um, and I'll, I'll give you three reasons why I think this is critical. What you got you through high school, what got you into these seats, isn't necessarily what is going to get you through college. That's the first thing. Um, following your path makes you more successful, not less. That's the second thing. And the third thing is, it's what God wants you to do. I just talked to him this morning. <laughs> this is what he wants you to do. And so I'll talk a little bit about Catholic Augustinian uh, institution that we are and how we think about your path, okay? Uh, and then just so you know this is good advice, I'll, I'll conclude by telling some stories about some students that we have who followed their path and how they came out. So um, the first reason I want to give you for following your own path, uh, what worked in high school isn't necessarily the thing that's going to work in college. That's the first thing to realize. And this is a hard one to get. It's a hard pivot to make because you were really successful in high school. I've, I've looked at your profiles. I know exactly what you got on your SATs. Um, it's really impressive, right? Um, high school is a marathon, though. This is the way I always think about it. When I talk to my students and ask them about their experience in high school, I always come away thinking, boy, that's a marathon. Um, days that start at 6 or 7 in the morning, days that go until 1 or 2 in the evening, days that are filled with school and homework and activities and driving back and forth to all sorts of things like tutoring and SAT prep and then travel soccer on the weekend. I mean, it is a grind. It's, it's delightful in a lot of cases, but it's also a lot of work, right? And so you've just run this marathon, and you've been really successful at it. And the thing about a marathon is that two things are clear in a marathon, not that I've ever run one. Um, but I've heard. Uh, the line is clear. You start at the starting line, and you look down at your feet, and there's a line, the marathon line. And if you run along that line, or limp along that line, or whatever you do, at the end, there's a finish line. So those two things are clear, right? And high school's a marathon in that it's a long race, but it's also the race course is clear, and the finish line is clear, right? 
You know, you have to take SATs, you know, you have to fill out your, your applications, you know, you have to get a high peach GPA and all the activities and volunteer work and so on, right? And at the end of that marathon, you are in your dream school, right? So you won the race. So that's the first thing to say to, to sort of ease that anxiety that you might feel, be feeling about this choice. You're tremendously successful. The only question is what you're going to do with the success that's coming your way, right? But what got you to this point at the finish line isn't necessarily the thing that's going to that's drive you forward to success through college and beyond. I've been here 27 years. I've sent a lot of students off into the world. And I always challenge them when they show up, don't double down on the marathon. <clears throat> the, the line isn't as clear in college, right? Everybody's got to do internships. Everybody's got to work on their schoolwork. But at the end, it's not getting into college, it's having a life. It's finding out what career works for you. It's finding out who, what your talents are. It's asking yourself different questions, challenging yourself to, add, to, to think about, who am I? What are my passions? What are my desires? What's good for me? What kind of work do I want to accomplish in the world? What kind of family do I want to have? That's a much more complicated set of questions than the question, what's, what college do I want to go to? And they're much more exciting questions, too, though, right? So, so I want to challenge you to think about this adventure that you're going into differently than the marathon. <laughs> and I want you to think about going to a place that's going to ask you to wrestle with those central questions that you need to wrestle to if you're going to come out on the other side and really be prepared for the life that you deserve. Okay? So do something different now that you're here. And Honors is set up to help you engage that task of pivoting into this question, what kind of life do I want to live? Right? Um, the second thing I want to say is that you'll be more successful if you do this, if you make this pivot successful, successfully, not less. Um, I talk to a lot of people, recruiters uh, for, for corporations, people who choose uh, students for competitive fellowships like Fulbrights, people who are on admissions committees uh, for med school, and as diverse as these people are in their jobs, they all say the same thing about what they're looking for. I'm looking for a distinctive candidate. Somebody who can tell their own story, right? You'll all have internships, you'll all have uh, activities, you'll all have uh, uh, majors, but you have to find the path through those things that works for you. And if you do that, and you chart your own path and walk that path successfully, and you will, you'll be more distinctive. You'll be able to go into an interview and say, uh, I went to this study abroad experience because this is what I was trying to set myself up for, right? Or I chose this internship, and you know what? It didn't really work for me, so I tried something else, right? Those are actually the stories, if you talk to recruiters, if you talk to students who have successfully landed good jobs, those are the stories that actually work. I had a, a young man who two or three years ago went in for a finance interview, and he took a couple courses in architecture because he, he just loved it. Um, and he was sitting in, a, in a, one of these high-rises in Pittsburgh and looking over at the, uh, the cityscape. And the interviewer said, what are you looking at? And he said, well, I, I love architecture. And they, they had this 20-minute conversation about architecture, and he got the job. Um, those are the kinds of experiences that our students need to cultivate uh, so they can, they can make a claim that they're different, that they're walking their own path, and they're distinctive candidates. The third thing I want to say is... Um, this is what God wants you to do, right? Uh, and, and this point come, is, is deeply rooted in the fact that we're a Catholic Augustinian university. So we'll talk about a little bit about this. Uh, I teach St. Augustine pretty regularly. And he comes out of this tradition that links goodness and truth. So he, he always talks about the pilgrimage of life, the journey you have to, to, to walk in life, and you're successful in life if you can find that journey that makes the most sense for you. And the truth of that journey is linked to the goodness of the person that you are. So at the center of our institution, at the center of our, our claim at Villanova, is that you were created out of love. You were created because God wanted you to be here. He has a plan for you. Uh, and he gave you all these talents and, and rich gifts that he expects you to develop. Um, <clears throat> and that's the key for understanding the truth of your path, to understand what is distinctively good about you. 
and we really focus a lot of our attention on bringing that out of students. Uh, no one has ever been on earth like you <laughs> and had your gifts and your passions and your dreams, and no one will ever be the same as you ever again. Among the billions of people that ever existed, there's only one you, right? And you are supposed to use those rich, rich gifts and, and passions and develop them both for your own happiness and the people around you, but also to serve the, the, the human family, right? And so that is the key to a successful life. Uh, it helps you success, it get success in college. Uh, it gives you this kind of identity capital, this sort of unique brand that, that's, that's who you are, the way you talk and the way you think and the way the, your background. And it also um, is a way of sort of developing these rich talents that you have. Now, I said I'd, I'd share some stories of some, some people uh, who discovered their path here. So I'll tell you about Blair. Uh, Blair graduated two years ago. Um, she came in undeclared arts. No idea what she wanted to do. She took our interdisc program, which is kind of our great books program, lo fell in love with English and poetry, declared that for a major. Um, had no idea what she was going to do with it. She graduated. She went to Trinity University in Dublin. Um, I was just out there uh, last summer to uh, set up a study abroad program at, uh, uh, with honors. Uh, Ireland's number one university. She got a master's in Irish literature. And now she got a full ride to a, a, a very prestigious law school. And she is looking into environmental law. That was her path. She had no idea what that path was going to look like, and she landed it. Um, Dylan, I want to say, graduated four years ago. He's one of my favorite students I've ever had here. Um, he took our politics, philosophy, economics program, that like Chloe. Um, came in knowing he wanted to do business, declared VSB. Uh, so he was oriented in a way that maybe Blair wasn't. Uh, but he walked through this PPE program. He went to Cambridge on one of our study abroad programs. He found that kind of life transforming, really interested in markets, really interested in international finance. And he talked about that experience in his uh, interview at Goldman Sachs, and he landed that job. I think Dylan was meant to be a banker. <laughs> I think that was his path. And he found it, right? And he found it through the, the curriculum that we have and the experiences that he, he got here and abroad. Um, Emily is another student that graduated in 2018. Uh, she was really interested in neuroscience, but she was also interested in the humanities. So she declared two majors that are kind of as opposite from each other as you can think, humanities and neuroscience. Um, and I had a lot of conversations with her about how to integrate these two interests in her career, and she wasn't sure how to do them, but I encouraged her to pursue both. Um, because I felt like that was part of her path. That was, those were her passions, and she was really good at them. So she came back to talk to our, um, she got into med school, local med school. Um, she's doing really well. She came back to talk to our students two years ago about uh, her research and how to get into med school. And her research that she's getting credit for in med school really is about these kind of um, emerging issues in uh, healthcare having to do with holistic care of patients, thinking about people not just as um, a neuron or a foot as <laughs> a whole person. And, and she's particularly interested in that holistic care as it applies to the difficult conversations that uh, physicians sometimes have to have with patients who are, in, uh, who are experiencing um, distressing medical diagnoses. Uh, and she's really making a difference. I mean, her, her research is, is quite powerful. And I have, no, I, I have no doubt that she's going to be a tremendous doctor, but she's also going to be somebody who's, who's going to consult and be a leader on these kinds of issues that are absolutely critical for the healthcare field. Emily had no idea that she wanted to do things like this when she came into Villanova. Um, I don't, you know, I'm not trying to put more pressure on you. Dr. Smith told me that now I have to go to Goldman Sachs and be a change agent in the medical field. That's not the point. When they were sitting in these chairs, they didn't know this was their path, is the point, right? And we helped them find it. Um, some, some took more twists and turns through Dublin and so on, and some were, were relatively straightforward. But they found and landed their path. So I want to give you a kind of a different metaphor to think about as you uh, engage this decision. Uh, the, the metaphor I started with was the marathon, right? You're really successful with the marathon, and so you're tempted to kind of double down on the marathon. Don't do that. Think about sitting in your seat as if you are... Um, on a really nice jet <laughs> that's really fast 
and is going to go someplace really interesting, right? You're taking off from the East Coast and you're flying somewhere out west, and you're not exactly sure where you're going to land. Even if you know you're going to do chemical engineering, you still don't know where you're going to land, right? Small adjustments in the course that you make now make huge differences in where you land. If you make a slight course adjustment right when you take off from Newark, you'll land in Seattle or you'll land in San Diego, right? We help you make those course adjustments that help you orient yourself to these, this question, who am I and what do I want to do, right? And you're going to hit turbulence over Cleveland. I guarantee it. I've seen it over and over. Cleveland has a lot of turbulence. Um, people come into my office or Madeline's office and they, and they say, I've hit turbulence, and we calm them down. And we, 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 we adjust their flight plans, right? And then when, they're, when they land, we celebrate with them, right? Um, you guys are on this powerful jet. You're going someplace great. Uh, be excited about that. Um, and good luck no matter where your paths take you. And my, my colleague now, Madeline Reynolds, is going to come up and talk to you more particularly about how we accomplish this. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Smith. At this point, we'll hear from Ms. Madeline Reynolds, the Associate Director of the Honors Program. Ms. Reynolds is a graduate of Villanova University Honors Program and joined the staff of the Honors Program in 2015. Her talent and passion for student development drove her to create Shaping a College Life Curriculum, which several of our freshmen participate in during their, fr their first semester at Villanova. She also guides and honors, um, honors seniors through their senior thesis pro uh, projects, excuse me, and is the junior and senior advisor for the Honors Program. Welcome, Ms. Reynolds. Thank you, Chloe, for that kind introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Madeline Reynolds, and I'm the Associate Director of the Honors Program here at Villanova University. I want to wish you a warm welcome and a tremendous congratulations to your acceptance to Villanova and to Honors. In discussing what I would be sharing with you all today about our program, I kept coming back to a freshman course we offer where one of the curricular weeks focuses on the question, how do I shape and how am I shaped by my environment? Maybe this is a question you've been thinking about now having spent some years in high school, uh, thinking about how that experience has impacted you through your classes, through activities, through friendships. That is why I think there is no better way to introduce you to our honors program than to discuss our mission, to share with you how on a daily basis we enact that mission, because this is something that you are a part of. Within honors, our mission is comprised of three pillars. Academics, a commitment to the life of the mind, our community of fellowship, a space for all members to come together, to learn, to serve, to lead, and holistic formation, taking seriously the fact that you enter our program in late adolescence and you graduate as young adults. We give you the space and the invitation to answer the many questions in between those two points. It is through all three pillars that we cultivate the minds and enlarge the sensibilities of our students. Our first pillar, commitment to the life of the mind, resides in our academic life. By being a member of our program, you are opening yourself to experience a classroom environment capped at around 16 students. A smaller class size allows the environment to be rich with discussion, inquiry, and your own curiosity. You are surrounded by students who have done the reading, done the work, and are ready to engage with ideas and think critically. As a first year student, you can expect two to three honors courses on your five course freshman schedule. 
We always say that honors classes are never in addition to, rather they are in place of. You take honors sections of courses offered at Villanova within your core requirements and requirements in your home college. Maybe you join us for honors philosophy, honors thermodynamics, honors medical ethics, honors psychology, or honors business dynamics. As you take more honors classes throughout your four years, you're on your way to one of our credential opportunities, such as our honors degree or honors minors. Maybe you're interested in writing your honors thesis senior year, where you're paired with a faculty member who you will work with one-on-one -on -one throughout this year-long academic project. Our seniors this year are focusing on topics ranging from the opioid epidemic and tactical urbanism to promotional fields impacting Gen Z beauty trends and Harry Potter and the Hogwarts houses through the lens of what it means to choose and be chosen. You will hear throughout this weekend about our honors cohorts. Honors cohorts are living and learning communities that you opt into freshman year, allowing you to move through coursework within your university core requirements through a thematic sequence and lens that you are interested in, while living together in the honors dorm. I'm excited for you to learn more about our six honors cohorts from our upcoming speakers and panel of students. Additional unique academic experiences that we offer within our program are honors, our honors business minor, our combined BA JD program with the Villanova Law School, where you complete your undergraduate work in three years, and your fourth year, your senior year, is your 1L year at Villanova Law as well as our Conley Delouvrier Scholarship, a full semester tuition scholarship to study abroad that is only for honors students. What I enjoy about the scholarship is that the application process incorporates elements that students are presented with in postgraduate scholarship opportunities. As early as freshman year, our students are asking for recommendation letters from professors, having their resumes complete, and writing letters of intent for their choice of specific programming. Our first pillar seeks to open you to the delights that encompass the life of the mind. And then we come to pillar two, our community of fellowship, where you're able to find friendship, support, and encouragement throughout your four years. Being a member of our program gives you the opportunity to live in honors housing. Our freshman dorm is on South Campus, where the majority of freshman students live. And we now have a West Campus apartment building, allowing our upperclassmen to live in community with one another. You can participate in study abroad partnerships, many tied to our cohort experiences at the University of Andrews, the, Uni the University of St. Andrews, the University of Cambridge, our two-week May program to South Africa that kicks off this summer, along with our upcoming Trinity College Dublin program, launching spring of 2021. We also focus on growing your leadership skill set, giving you the opportunity to join our Honors Student Advisory Board that meets with our Honors Director during a board meeting each semester to suggest improvements to our Honors Program and to provide feedback on your Honors experience. Our Honors Ambassadors joining us today who represent our program at various admissions functions and our Honors Inner Hall Council working on events in our dorms. You will also be called on to serve your peers. Our honors peer mentors are upperclassmen who serve as mentors to our freshman students for their time at Villanova. Peer mentors are able to answer any questions you have as new honors students. Maybe you'll write for our literary magazine polis or attend our slate of honors events and activities, such as Harry Potter Day, trying to win the NCAA basketball bracket challenge, or attending honors formal in the spring. We are a community based in supporting one another over your four years at Villanova and beyond. 
happening both inside and outside the classroom. And that brings us to our final pillar, holistic formation. Now, I see holistic formation as twofold, housed within our honors advising practices and our shaping a college life initiative. You'll have a primary academic advisor within your home college, along with a one-on-one -on -one honors advisor within our program, helping you chart your flight path over these next four years. Someone who you can discuss all of the various opportunities we talked about, from classes, cohorts, and credentials, to leadership and scholarship opportunities. Our assistant director, Ms. Kimberly Hydor, advises our freshmen and sophomores, and I advise our juniors and seniors. Our role is to get to know you, understand your goals, and link you to the opportunities that serve those goals, help you chart your course through our honors curriculum, and provide that extra layer of support. I mentioned that as a program, we take seriously the responsibility that you enter our program within late adolescence and you graduate as young adults. We've created courses within our program for you to ask the bigger questions surrounding your life. And this is housed in our Shaping a College Life initiative. Freshman year, you can opt into Shaping a College Life. This course is a one-credit course aimed at helping students in their transition to college linking them to resources, having them ask deeper questions surrounding time management, study skills, friendships, relationships. We start the year not asking what you want to do, but rather what do you want to be good at? Sophomore year, you can opt into shaping a work life, a course aimed at asking the deeper questions surrounding work and vocation giving you the tools to successfully navigate your future career path while asking questions surrounding meaningful work and your contribution to society. And then we offer an upper level course for our juniors and seniors entitled Shaping an Adult Life, focusing on topics such as work life, leisure, and relationships. You're not flying solo as you answer these questions. We have a strong team here at Honors, along with Dr. Smith, myself, Ms. Hydor. We have our fantastic program coordinator, coordinator, Jamie Houghton, and our impeccable program assistant, Christine Sioko, who are here to get to know you and to help you over these next four years. In speaking with you, I want to reiterate that this is an overview of our mission and what we offer. This weekend is about getting your questions answered. So do make sure to ask more about any of these areas, such as classes, cohorts, leadership opportunities, during our Q&A, and throughout this weekend. So how will you shape and how will you be shaped by your environment? We don't know the answer to that question yet, but I can tell you that there is a team of staff, of faculty, and your fellow peers who are here to support you, to work with you, to cheer you on, and who ultimately look forward to finding out how you answer those questions. I know I certainly do. Congratulations once more on your acceptance to our program and have a fantastic weekend here at Villanova. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Reynolds. Now you'll hear from two honors students, a freshman and a senior, who will talk to you about their personal experience at Villanova and in honors. First, I'd like to welcome Grace Lundell, a freshman in the College of Liberal Arts and Science. Grace is planning to double major in history and political science with a minor in French. She is currently participating in the Good, True, Beautiful Honors Cohort, along with living in the Honors Freshman Dorm. Welcome, Grace. Good afternoon, prospective honors students, parents, and friends. My name is Grace Lundell, 
and I am from Washington, D.C., and a freshman in the Honors Program in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. It's a pleasure to have the opportunity to speak with you today. Only a year ago, I was in your shoes. I remember sitting on the couch in my family's living room after I'd received my early action acceptances, Villanova amongst them, and anxiously trying to think of some way to choose the university I wish to attend. Questions such as, do I want to go to a large school or a small school? How far do I truly want to be from home? And dozens of others were running through my mind at a mile a minute from the moment I received my first acceptance letter. Even after touring universities since the beginning of sophomore year and talking ad nauseum about my interest with my college counselor, I still honestly had little idea what I wanted or needed from my university experience. Adding to my confusion was the fact that I had been admitted to Villanova's honors program. I was thrilled at my acceptance. I still remember the joy and pride I felt when I opened that unexpected, unexpected honors acceptance email on the car ride home from one of my basketball games. A rather nice pick-me-up given that we just lost another game in a dismal season. <laughs> but um, I was also unsure of how being in the honors program would impact my life if I chose to attend Villanova. I worry that other members of this program would be terribly competitive and disinclined to help each other. I worried that being a member of this program would isolate me from the rest of the student body. And I would guess that such worries might be running through your head at this moment. I resolved that given my confusion, the next step in my university decision process was to visit Villanova again. So in February of last year, I shadowed a freshman student for a day and attended her classes, as well as met with an honors student ambassador to better understand what life as part of the Villanova Honors Program would entail. During that one day in February, I realized that I wanted a university experience that would enable me to take classes with professors who would truly take the time to help me succeed. I realized I wanted a university with a focus on the growth of the individual within the context of their larger community. I realized I wanted a university whose size meant I could continuously meet new people and yet never feel I was lost in a crowd. I realized that Villanova was and is that school for me. The classes I sat in on were engaging and relatable to real world issues. The professors and students I encountered were ready and willing to talk with me. And the honor student ambassador I met was kind, gregarious, and welcoming. I saw that Villanova is a school that emphasizes strong community and a convivial atmosphere. Moreover, I realized that the honors program with its smaller group of students, honors housing, and discussion-based classes was the perfect place in which I could find intellectual stimulation and staunch camaraderie at a university that already emphasizes the value of fierce friendship. Starting Villanova has only affirmed this perception I had of the Villanova Honors Program. I can honestly say that my Honors classes have been some of my favorite classes. The professors who teach in the Honors Program are thoughtful, intelligent, and funny. When one of your Honors professors brings his dog into class, you know that you're in the right place. Furthermore, the smaller size of the discussion-based classes ensures that you enter into thoughtful and lively conversations with fellow students as well as your professors as you puzzle through difficult concepts in ways that help you to better understand complicated issues in areas such as philosophy, theology, and politics. Moreover, not only has the Villanova Honors Program provided me the opportunity to take fascinating classes, but living in honors housing and taking part in the numerous honors events has provided me the opportunity to, to, to develop a supportive community of friends to help me transition to university life. Living in honors housing means you create strong bonds with people whom you see every day in class and whom you see late at night in the common room as you finish essays and readings or chat about the latest episode of your favorite TV show. Living in honors housing means that some of your closest friends at university live right across the hall from you. Furthermore, honors events such as Hot Chocolate Day and Harry Potter Day, my personal favorite, helps to ensure that you form relationships with honor students from all colleges and of all years. However, being an honors student does not in any way limit you to making friends solely in honors. Although, as I admitted, I worried about possible social isolation as an honors student, 
Coming to Villanova, I've realized that that worry is completely unfounded. Choosing to live in honors housing and taking some honors classes does not ensure that you will only make friends with people in the honors program. Amongst some of my closest friends are people I met through orientation or in my French class on the first day of fall semester. Choosing to come to Villanova as an honors student does not mean you're limiting yourself socially. Rather, it means you're opening yourself up to making even more meaningful and lasting connections with professors and students during your time at university. So as you sit at home and try to decide on the university you wish to attend, just as I did a year ago, ask yourself what you truly want out of your time at university. If you want to be academically challenged in an environment that fosters collaboration rather than competition, if you want to form lasting friendships and meet thought-provoking people, I believe that Villanova's honors program would be a good fit for you. Being a Villanova honors student means that you not only learn how to write more succinctly, argue more persuasively, and think more analytically, but it also means that you create relationships that will bind you together for the next four years of your life, and hopefully beyond. Thanks, Grace. From your first year at Villanova to your last, honors can really define your experience here. Gwen Sakosha, a senior in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, will reflect on her four years here. During her time at Villanova, Gwen has lived in honors housing, participated in the medical humanities honors cohort, and traveled abroad in Copenhagen, Denmark. Gwen is a member of the Honors Student Advisory Board, past president of the Honors Inneric Hall Council, and continues to serve the program as both an Honors Student er, Ambassador as well as an Honors Peer Mentor. As a biology major, she plans to complete her Honors um, Senior Thesis this spring to earn her Honors Degree. Welcome, Gwen. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for the introduction, Chloe. Again, my name is Gwen, and I am a senior biology major here at Villanova. I would first like to congratulate you all on your acceptances to Villanova in the honors program. Your hard work in the classroom and dedication to extracurriculars and your community has truly paid off. I hope you're all very proud of what you've accomplished. Reflecting as a senior, the honors program has been a crucial part of my experience at Villanova. I'm incredibly grateful for all the honors program has given me. And with that, I'm honored and excited to share with you my story to show you all what the honors program is like. Four years ago, I sat where you all right now, um, right over there, and I was overwhelmingly happy to be done with taking tests, writing essays, and submitting applications. But I felt the weight of this important decision inside me. Since then, I can confidently say that the two hours I spent in this room in 2016 listening to the faculty and students of honors speak helped lessen the fear I had about making a decision about college. It was clear to me the honors program at Villanova was a community where I would be challenged but supported by great friends, caring staff, and dedicated faculty. I really felt like it was a place where I would find a home. And four years later, I can say this is true. To start, I want to share with you what honors classes are like. If you go to Gary Hall, where the honors program is located on campus, you will notice the chairs in the classrooms are set up in a circle. Honors courses are small, with no more than 16 students in a class. I've always found these classes to be interactive and thought-provoking due to insightful conversations with fellow students and the professor. My experiences in honors started when I was a freshman and a member of the honors medical humanities cohort. I was in class alongside other students who lived in my dorm that were passionate about medicine, healthcare, and ethics. Part of the medical humanities experience included the good, true, beautiful sequences of courses. The syllabus for the good, which was taught by Dr. Smith, was full of questions like, what does it mean to be good, and what type of person do I want to be? And it ultimately had me question, what is a good life? These were essential questions I had never thought about before in my academic career. I felt challenged reading great philosophers, but fulfilled knowing I was considering important questions that influenced how I saw the world and goodness through social, political, and ethical lenses. My honors courses have always been some of my favorites in the past four years. 
The lessons and pieces I take away from them have been a true testament to the unique assignments and projects I've been able to work on alongside my classmates and professors. The final exam for Dr. Smith's good course was an oral group final in the form of a conversation with fellow classmates. I remember the night before the exam clarifying notes and ideas with my group members, working together as a true team to succeed. In Dr. Dan Sisko's philosophy class, my final project involved designing a website to display my interpretation of feminist philosophy. In Dr. Brakeman's medical ethics course, the last portion of the semester was designed as a research symposium in which each member of the class gave a formal presentation about the ethical healthcare topic they devoted their entire semester to analyzing. I was able to connect with my professors too by going into Dr. Smith's office freshman year to talk about the transition to college and calm some of my turbulence, or getting recommendations in Europe from Dr. Dan Sisko when I studied abroad, or even going to a celebratory pool party at Dr. Brakeman's house after our research presentations. Not only has the honors program given me some incredible experiences in class at Villanova, but beyond, and I want to share two specific experiences. I've been working in a cognitive science lab since my sophomore year, where I study a type of hearing loss called auditory neuropathy. The work in the lab has led to my senior thesis titled A Psychophysical Test for Hidden Hearing Loss. The honors program is proud of its students and cheering them on every step of their journey. Because of the generosity of the honors program, I received funding to travel to an international conference in Louisville, Kentucky to present my research on auditory neuropathy. There, I spoke and networked with some of the most respected hearing scientists in the world. Additionally, I was able to study public health abroad in Copenhagen, Denmark for a whole semester due to the Connolly de Louvier International Scholars Program. In Denmark, I took classes focusing on the Danish language and culture and Danish healthcare system. Living and learning in Denmark for four months had a permanent positive impact on my life. Coming back to campus, I constantly see how my time in Scandinavia still impacts me, practically daily. Whether it's wearing all black like a true Scandinavian, volunteering weekly at a public health clinic for vulnerable populations in Philadelphia, Denmark, or Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, or considering the, the components of different healthcare systems and delivery models, Denmark has touched me in so many ways. So far, I've told you about my honors classes, relationships with professors, and global experiences. These aspects have been immensely important parts of my honors experience. But my favorite part of honors has been the people I've met through this program. Not to scare anyone, but you should take a look around the room right now, because some of your future best friends are sitting here. The people who will be in your wedding party or an aunt or uncle to your kids. The people of honors are truly what makes it so special. During my freshman year, I lived in Coghlan Hall, which was the dorm that the honors students had the opportunity to live in. I loved living close to the people I had class with. Honors students care about each other and want to help each other succeed. Being at Villanova has allowed me to make friendships with some wonderful people, but I can say that my best friends lived with me in Coghlan during my freshman year. When I think back to my life before Villanova, it's hard to imagine that I ever lived without these friends by my side. I have countless memories with my best friend Adam crying laughing on the first floor of Coghlan late at night when we were trying to study for our general chemistry exams. And it's safe to say we've come a long way since Jen came together, because now Adam, who's a civil engineer, has multiple job offers around the country. Or my other best friend Mimi, who doubles as my roommate, is also a biology major in the honors program, just like me. But Mimi and I have cultivated completely different stories and paths through the honors program. While I am focused on medical research, Mimi's currently writing her senior thesis titled The Good Death about the paradoxical idea of dying well and the ethical components of assisted death in medicine. Friends like Adam and Mimi, among so many other friends from the honors program, are forever friends. In a few minutes, I have been able to share with you my honors story. The honors program has a banner hanging above the door when you enter Gary Hall that reads the verse, to whom much is given, much is expected. The honors program has given me more than I ever could have imagined new perspectives on the modern world, the ability to travel for research and study, relationships with faculty and mentors, and lasting friendships. This semester, my last semester, I'm taking an honors colloquia course called The Care of the Soul. I feel as though this course is the embodiment of honors as we are spending the semester listening to ourselves deeply and honestly while seeking our vocational calling. 
As a graduating senior, this is the perfect course to finish college with as I seek fulfillment in my life and career beyond Villanova. Honors has fostered a sense of curiosity, diligence, and integrity in me, skills that I will take with me after I graduate and begin working and living outside of college. So this weekend, keep an open mind, and just like I'm doing in care of the soul, listen to yourself. If you feel a connection here, follow it. The Honors Program is here to support you and make you feel welcomed in our community so you can grow and flourish while at Villanova, your new home. Thank you. Thanks so much, Gwen. Now, you'll, we'll give you the opportunity to ask some of your questions of our current honors students and our presenters. I'd like to welcome our student panel to the stage. Hi, hi everyone. Um, my name is Bill. Um, I'm a chemical engineer from Westchester, New York, and uh, happy to see everyone here. Hey guys, I am John Michael Kinsella. I am a junior finance major from Dallas, Texas. Uh, and uh, I can speak about study abroad um, questions as well. We might ask those later. Hi everyone, I'm Nicole Garcia. I'm a sophomore chemistry major, um, and I can talk also about study abroad in the future, research, anything in the sciences. Hi everyone, my name is Timothy Long. I'm from just outside Akron, Ohio, and I'm a senior humanities major with minors in political science, theology, and philosophy. Um, and I can speak to study abroad, funding through your various scholarship, and senior thesis if you have questions about that. Hi everyone, my name is Alexandra Porta. I'm a nursing major from Washington, D.C. and a minor in French and French Film Studies. And I can also speak about the honors thesis as well as honors learning and research. So feel free to come up and you know, ask any questions that you have right now. Um, 
Yeah, so there's about uh, five cohorts that we have, and so three of them actually uh, specifically had the option of studying abroad. Uh, and so I, like Olivia, I was in the Columbus philosophy and economics cohort, and that was uh, um, three classes with uh, the same group of uh, 10 to 12 people, uh, and we got really close and had that kind of like Socratic circle, kind of seminar type um, classes. And then um, what I opted to do was go with the uh, uh, about 10 of them, and we went to Cambridge University. Uh, and so, uh, going abroad, um, highly recommended you came to Townsend. Um, but uh, what's great about the five boards specifically and the degree that you go abroad with is that when you go abroad, like, you're going to enjoy yourself, enjoy every minute of it. But when you go abroad in the cohort, you're going with some of your best friends, uh, and you're going with people that you've been working with um, for the last like, year and a half before that. And so, um, that kind of experience was like none other that I had. I had college career so far. Um, the the rounds was good to the other cohorts. Um, yeah, I'm actually currently in the medical humanities cohort, and um, yeah, what John said was great. Just to add on, um, there are just many opportunities to listen to speakers or go to dinner events, just to like further solidify that immersion and you know, holistic learning experience you can get from being a part of it. Also, just to add on to that, so I was in John Wrinkle's class, and like, you really get to learn from amazing scholars. So one of our professors um, was uh, Dr. Mary Hirschfeld, and she studies the intersection of theology and economics, which is a really interesting intersection. So I felt really lucky to have uh, a professor like her at such an early time in my college career. So I think that that's another reason that you might be interested in doing the honors cohort. And there's a list of all the cohorts and descriptions in the packets in the um, And then there's also um, Hi, so I have a couple questions about like the honors courses that you specifically chose for all of you. Do you focus that within the honors program like according to your major and then the ones that don't really apply to your major but are required? say your freshman year outside of the honors program, like how does that work? So um, at least personally for me, um, as a science student, most of the honors classes that I'm taking have to do with the core curriculum and for interests outside of my major. Um, most of your like, ethics, philosophy, theology, classes like that that everyone here in Villanova takes, um, you can take those through honors. Um, and what's really great about them is the small class size, the like personal help that you get from your professor. Um, and there are also classes that you can take within your major um, through honors in order to fulfill either if you want to go for the degree or the minor, you can get different requirements fulfilled through honors. Uh, and so you experience things like 
uh, where other just normal classes have like an exam here and an exam there. We have like a more kind of in-depth project and more like deeper research on like something that I wanted to study in finance and kind of like explore that field. So there's a lot of freedom in kind of uh, how deep you can go into the studies that interest you. Going back to uh, going back to the cohort thing for a minute, do you only make friends in honors? Like, if you're part of a cohort, do you only make friends in honors? Um, great question. No, definitely not. Uh, um, while you know the people in the cohort, I'm very friendly with. You know, so just see them a lot. Um, Villanova in general is a very friendly place, and you definitely see the honors students look for themselves and challenge themselves, just to, like get themselves out there. So. Um, along with the many activities you'll be doing and opportunities that other clubs present, you'll be meeting a lot of people in the process outside of honors with that. So this question is for Tom Magnum. Uh, can you speak to what it's been like for you coming from not the Atlantic Coast, so coming from the Southwest? Oh yeah. Um, so uh, just to repeat from earlier, I'm from Dallas, Texas. Um, and as you can see, it is very different climate up here <laughs> than it is down there. Um, so like that was an adjustment period, but um, coming from so far away, um, you kind of do, uh, you, you make friends with the people who are from this area because uh, they know this area, they're familiar with it, uh, and then you also kind of find friends in the people that are coming from like far. So then like uh, I used to, like freshman year, I used to just have conversations sometimes with like uh, my people who came from like far away and just like, oh yeah, like doing this home kind of thing, stuff like that. But then really knowing that like, I'm, I'm not the only one that's away from home and like we're all doing this together. Um, and just um, that like we're here to um, study and make friends and kind of like, um, like go to college and enjoy ourselves. So um, in that way, like I've been able to um, find the friends that um, are able to help me through like being like all the way from home. Um, and uh, just kind of, Making friends that way. And so uh, it, it wasn't just a period at first, but um, I was very, uh, very vocal in the local as well. So. so I have a question for Timothy, but I guess it could be general as well. But I know you mentioned you were a humanities major and then did politics <laughs> and the last one, the theology, of philosophy. theology and philosophy. So that's like a lot of things, and I guess the honor program is also really vigorous. So how would you uh, talk about, I guess, like work-life balance and what that looks like? And yeah. Yeah, um, absolutely. It's a great question. So um, honors actually offers a lot of, I think, humanities. They offer a good number of, sort of uh, major specific courses um, for my major in humanities. And then my major in particular is interdisciplinary. Uh, so you can go across town between philosophy and, uh, and the humanities curriculum. Um, Work-life balance, that's um, something you have to get good at in college, right? Um, and like Dr. Smith said, it's important to adjust your mindset that it's no longer a marathon. You really do want to prioritize your leisure time and prioritize your adventures. Uh, any other experiences that aren't just academic or professional that will help you grow personally throughout college? Um, so for me, that's just sometimes recognizing it's okay to hang out with friends to no point. Um, and even to like, if that's a sacrifice a little bit of study time, that's okay. Um, so it's important to recognize that uh, your own limitations while still pursuing excellence. Uh, yeah, it's just a, a balancing act that's here, like scheduling out your time and making sure your hours are full so you can put yourself to as much time to study throughout the day and actually commit you yourself to study so that you have free time beyond that. Uh, as a Thank you. 
as much as just uh, the fact that um, in, because I went to Michael Gordon, because I went to uh, be mad at my friends from the classes that I've been like, taking the year and a half before, uh, what was like the biggest difference for me was just like going abroad like, with my friends and kind of experiencing something new, um, like uh, going to England like that, with people that I was familiar with, um, with people that I was comfortable with, um, and kind of just like having a few aspects, also having that little bit of aspect at home. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think that was probably the biggest part for me. Um, I also think that in terms of if you're somebody who wants a little bit more like of a specific structure in their study abroad program, like for example, the one I'm going to this summer is very tailored to what I'm interested in, sustainability and peace and justice, which are the two minors. Um, and it fits in really well. Meanwhile, through the like, university-wide programs, you can like find ones. There's a lot of different opportunities, and the honors ones are more, there's like a few specific ones that are offered through honors, and if you want to go anywhere else, if you already have a plan of what you want to do, you can do that through probably any of the other um, political offered study abroad programs. So there's a lot of flexibility with either one. Hi, um, so you talked about the cohorts, and I just wanted to know how you chose which one you wanted to be part of. Yeah, I'll go for it, I guess. Uh, um, as I mentioned, uh, I was in the Medical Humanities, um, which included the Good Tree Beautiful sequence, and um, a big part of that was, um, I'm not sure right now, but I uh, definitely want to go to medical school, um, and that was obviously a big factor, and I'm just very interested in medicine. Um, so choosing something that aligns with your interests um, is generally a good idea, but um, as uh, someone else mentioned earlier, um, if you're looking to expand your interests in the other fields, I would definitely use the cohorts as an opportunity to do so. I chose mine because I saw the study abroad, but I just stood it. So I was like, I have to do it. Um, it was like, I was going to do it. I was like, I was like, I would love to go to the university. So I said, I was just like,
Well, I didn't necessarily understand what that meant, and she didn't be able to explain it very well. Is there any kind of a limitation on the number of APs you can bring in, assuming you have a test score to get credit for it here with uh, the honors program, coming into the honors program? Um, I actually do not know the uh, specific requirements for that or limitations for that, um, but uh, that is a great question for Dr. Smith after. <laughs> 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 or right now. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm not exactly sure what this student situation was. Uh, we don't take any credits to come from our courses, um, but typically what happens is you come in with AP and you have the right scores and then you, um, you get college credit or you get home credit. So we work with the colleges to sort of find the place that makes sense for the student to come in with whatever it is they have. Um, so I've never actually heard that. Okay. Your cohort and how did it 